Yes, thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. Can you hear me okay? I always okay. have to do a sound check. Um, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, just want to acknowledge the Lieutenant Governor and Governor because without their great uh, leadership and partnership, uh, our department would not be able to do what we do collectively with all of you to keep our small businesses going and our economy going um, in a state of crisis. Uh, thank you, Garrett, Tamika, and the entire uh, Greater Hartford uh, Regional Chamber organization. Um, again, you are really boots on the ground, um, feet on the street, and an extension of our team. Um, and without you, we would not be able to do the work that we do. And just want to give a huge shout out to Catherine Marks, District Director for the SBA. Um, she has been a true partner in crime. Um, we've really had to work lock and step with the SBA um, to, again, ensure that Connecticut businesses are getting their fair share of the federal resources that are, are coming. Um, so I wanna just take a few minutes um, to kind of update on uh, the state side of the economic recovery programs that we've been administering. And I think it's just important to note that all of the you know, programming that we've done has always meant to be a bridge and a shot on the arm um, for our small businesses in anticipation of, again, the, the larger, uh, fully backed uh, federal stimulus dollars, whether it's the Paycheck Protection Program or the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. And so uh, with that said, uh, the latest and greatest of those programs uh, have been, you know, what we've rolled out in the last uh, couple of months from about October, um, when we launched the $50 million Connecticut uh, CARES Small Business Grant Program, this was targeted to our smallest of small businesses um, that had no less than uh, 20 employees or no more than 1.5 million in annualized payroll expenses. Um, this was kind of the one-time $5,000 payment if you met our eligibility requirements. That application closed sometime in November. Um, we received over 18,000 um, applications. So the program was significantly oversubscribed. We are still you know, on target to um, fund at least uh, 10,000 businesses and nonprofits, again, for that one-time $5,000 payment. To date, we have funded uh, approximately uh, 7,500 companies um, with more in the pipeline every day. But as I think everyone could appreciate and imagine, you know, the team at DCD has been really working diligently to kind of stand up programs from a technology perspective overnight. And so with that comes some kinks and bumps in the road. Um, but I think the team has to really taken it in stride. So I just want to acknowledge all the small businesses and the DCD team um, for your, your patience um, because it has not been easy uh, trying to administer the program and again, get upwards of 10,000 businesses funded you know, in less than eight weeks, right? That historically has never happened. Um, so there's a first time for everything, but we wouldn't have been able to do it without our technology partner, SoFi. So for all those businesses who applied, um, you should have received a notification whether you were approved or denied. Um, to date, we're still kind of getting through that, that pipeline um, to get to that 10,000 business uh, mark. The next program was launched uh, shortly after, just before the holiday, the Christmas holiday. That was the $35 million Connecticut CARES Small Business Grant Program. This required no application. This was focused on more small to medium-sized businesses um, with gross receipts, um, an excess of upwards of $10 million annually. Um, the final eligibility pool looked around about 2,008 businesses. This was a heavy focus on restaurants, accommodations, and retails. Um, we really used DRS-generated data focusing on NICS codes, wages, and gross receipts, um, and really looking at businesses that received the grant, whether they had 25% uh, or more uh, down in those gross receipts year over year, if you will. Um, the average size grant was about 10, uh, 15,000. So the minimum was 10, the maximum was 30. Um, the eligibility was all posted on our website. Checks started going out. Um, around January 7th. So we've already got um, close to 20 million uh, 
checks cashed, if you will, um, for businesses that have received this grant. Um, and so if you are, you know, looking at the criteria, I'll post that in the chat. Um, and, you know, you feel like you meet the criteria and that you should have received a check, I would just ask that you reach out to the DRS hotline 860-297-5999. I will put this in the chat. Um, check on, again, the status of your potential eligibility if you feel like you, you know, should be receiving a check. Um, so those are, again, um, some of the highlights of the recent uh, grant programs that we've been administering. Um, again, these were all in the vein of, again, that bridge or that shot, on the shot in the arm to get us to the place where we are now. Um, well, you'll hear from Catherine Marks on the new round of the PPP yeah. and IDLE program and Shutter yeah. Venues grants. There's a lot of um, opportunity um, and more coming with the Biden-Harris administration taking the oath of office tomorrow. Um, the president elect Biden uh, rolled out his uh, first stage of his uh, stimulus package, um, which was $2 trillion. So I think we can all really start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. There are um, supports there, more support coming. Um, and Connecticut has been doing a fantastic job at our vaccination rollout. Um, so with all those factors, again, I think we can all see the light at the end of the tunnel. And we're just here to support, to ride this out and to get us to the place where we can get back to some normalcy. Thank you. Great, thanks, Glenn. And uh, I'll just let everyone know, you can start putting your, your questions into the chat. Uh, we'll take those in just a few moments, but I wanna welcome in our Lieutenant Governor, Susan Beisowitz. And Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much for joining us. I know uh, you've been out trying to connect businesses to these programs uh, because taking advantage of it really is the key. Absolutely. And I think Glendalyn did a great job of explaining some of the programs. Um, we started last year with our bridge loan program and our Headco loan program. And uh, we are now in process of finishing up the small business $5,000 grants. Um, we've had 7,500 $5,000 checks go out the door, and there's about another 2,500 uh, businesses that are in process right now. Uh, also, um, DRS and DECD worked on the recovery grant program to provide businesses with between $10,000 and $30,000 uh, grants with the idea that uh, you don't have to apply, that we would just look directly at DRS records and NIAC codes. Um, and so the businesses that got those or who are uh, in the process of getting those are businesses that are in uh, retail, arts, entertainment, uh, restaurants, winery and brewery, um, NAIC codes. So if you've not gotten your grant and you think you might be eligible, um, I wanna reiterate that you should call the DECD hotline at 860-500-2333 to um, make sure that we didn't miss anything if you think you're in one of those uh, NA NAIC codes. Um, we also wanna make sure uh, that Connecticut businesses are in the process of applying for all the programs that they think they could qualify for. So we've been partnering with uh, the SBA uh, and DECD to get information about all of these state and federal programs out to the business community. And so uh, we want to make sure that uh, people know that our federal government has uh, provided $285 billion in funding for um, the PPP program and that the EIDL program has an additional $20 billion. Um, and further, the Shuttered Stage Act has provided $15 billion for administration by the SBA. So uh, we want businesses to start the process of applying through the bank. If you've already applied for a PPP uh, loan, 
You can uh, give your bank a call to make sure that they are gonna be providing that as well. And if you need help with your application, there are, I wanna stress the number of free resources that are available for businesses. So one that I would stress would be uh, the Connecticut, um, the Women's Business Development Council. The Women's Business Development Council or WBDC is based in Stanford, but they have offices in New Haven and New London. Uh, and they have business advisors that are ready to help businesses apply. So if you're having difficulty uploading anything, you're having difficulty applying, literally they will help you for free, emphasis on free, they will help you to fill out your application. Further, uh, another really great resource is the Connecticut Small Business Assistance Centers at UConn. They also will do the same thing. They will help the smallest businesses or businesses that are having difficulty. Uh, they'll help you with your application or help you get set up to apply. The other thing that I would say is uh, we have such a close collaboration um, between our DECD and our small business um, and, and our SBA, Catherine Marks, you're gonna be hearing from her shortly, um, but the SBA knows about our programs and we know about the SBA programs. So um, if you're unsure about which to apply for, feel free to call the um, DECD hotline um, and reach out and also the Women's Business Development Council and the Small Business Ascent, uh, Assistance Centers are very well versed in what the programs are. Uh, and so uh, I want to just uh, say thank you to the New Haven Chamber for um, getting us all together. This is really important. We appreciate the great work um, that you're doing in making sure that all of our partners can get the message out as to what the resources are. So Garrett, thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. No, thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Um, let me turn now to Catherine Marks and, and Catherine uh, is the director for the SBA here in Connecticut. And Catherine, uh, today's a big day getting PPP uh, two started. And even if you're applying for the first time, um, we'll move to the questions in just a moment, but what should people know? Thank you, Garrett. And it's a pleasure always to be on with the governor and um, Glendalyn. We, we have a, a good stage act ready to, um, ready to go. So uh, um, we're trying to get that information out there because today is an important day. Um, I will try to talk um, not only in acronyms, but talk in sentences that people can understand so that they can get their information um, ready to go. So the Paycheck Protection Program is back open, um, PPP. It is still a forgivable loan program. So if you, if you use the money properly, you will get 100% forgiven. Um, it opens today for folks, number one, who did not have the opportunity to do a PPP last spring. Um, the, Governor talked a lot about set-asides. PPP was open last week for some of our smallest financial institutions in some of our underserved communities because the, the legislation really is making sure that it's targeting the underserved minority populations, women-owned businesses, and veterans-owned businesses. So right off the bat, there is a set-aside amount of money so that we can ensure that the PPP goes there. So if you haven't already applied for the PPP, you're gonna be applying for something called first draw, your first PPP. But what's exciting about today is today also opens up second draw or your second PPP. So if you used your first PPP up, you still have um, need, you can have start to apply today, again, through your lender for your second PPP. Let's talk about what's changed. Number one, to reach the smallest of the small lenders, the maximum loan the maximum forgivable loan is $2 million. Again, to reach the smallest um, businesses, the amount of employees that you have is dropped down to $300. 
and in, to ensure that these loans are going to businesses that have been impacted by COVID, you need to show a 25% reduction in revenue. So you're going to have to have that information. You're gonna to have to go through those qualifications when you go through the lender. So there's a lot of nuances in that 25% reduction and we can get into those um, with the question and answers. We are going through the forgiveness process and the forgiveness process is for those first set of loans. Forgiveness is a bad word. You didn't do anything wrong. Um, but if you go through the forgiveness process, your loan becomes a grant um, or your loan becomes 100% forgivable. So we're in that process right now. So even if you are in that forgivable loan process, you can still get that second draw loan. So you can still go to your bank and apply today for the second draw PPP. Um, we're trying to make the forgiveness process easier by making the forms simpler. So there's some really good stuff that came through that legislation. Um, if you are interested in an idle loan, which is Economic Injury Disaster Loan, EIDL. We've extended that for a whole year. And there's also um, opportunities, particularly in our underserved communities, where we're gonna be able to give out some idle advances. More information on that to follow. So I can spend you know, a good two hours talking about all the impacts um, that are in this bill that can help our small businesses. But I think that the governor pointed out correctly, that don't do this alone. The reason why we get together, you know, the governor, DECD and SBA two, three, four times a day sometimes is because we want to get the information out and we really want to get the information out that we have resource partners that are there to help. If, if businesses are really struggling now, trying to, trying to work through all the nuances can be just one more added burden. And we don't want that them to go through that. So, you know, look up SBA, you can see the resource partners, the Small Business Development Center, the Women's Business Development Council, the Women's Business Development Center at University of Hartford and SCORE. And also what's really exciting is that we have our non-traditional resource partners helping us, which is Headco in Hartford, SAMA, which is the Spanish Merchants Association, the Black, um, Black Business um, Association, all of them are working with us now to do our outreach. In fact, tomorrow, um, a colleague of mine, um, we're doing a, or this whole PPP webinar in Spanish to make sure that we do that important outreach. So thank you for having me. Don't forget to shop small, dine local, take out, and follow Connecticut SBA on Twitter. Great, thanks, Catherine. We'll get to some of these questions. And I'll just let everyone know if you uh, if you need to be connected to these resources, uh, just reach out to the chamber. We're partners uh, with the organizations listed, and then also we have some uh, chamber members who are willing to volunteer their time to help walk you through the process. Uh, Catherine, uh, let me start first question with you. I especially when we first rolled out PPP last year. There was a big rush. Everyone was worried the money was going to run out. It did run out uh, fairly quickly. Um, I get the sense that it's, you know, while, while you want to be urgent about it and get your application in, um, we don't have a sense that it's going to run out tomorrow. There's, there's some time better to do it right uh, than hastily. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, so the, the application deadline is March, um, March 31st. Um, but because of the fact that you need to show a re reduction in revenue, um, people are feeling that um, there's gonna be the money there um, to help these small businesses that have been affected. And also um, that there are set-asides. We, we don't have all the parameters for those set-asides yet, but there are set-asides for our underserved communities. And also a lot of caps, uh, capping the, 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 the larger end um, loans. Um, and just, uh, you know, one more question for you. Um, uh, as far as the last year in for the August uh, timeframe, there were changes to PPP. I think we have some people who maybe looked at the Paycheck Protection Program when it first came out. It didn't match their business with all the different timings and that. But uh, there were a lot of changes uh, in what you can do with the PPP loan as we get to today. 
Yeah, and again, um, it's it's really hard to unpack everything in a you know sort of a ten minute um, uh, you know opportunity to speak. There were a lot of changes, and and that's what I think is really important. There's a, a Hartford re uh, retail establishment that I'm working with, and when they were looking at PPP last spring, they were uncomfortable with it. Things were moving; they weren't sure what was going on they now have the opportunity to come back and apply for the first time. So that's really important. The one thing that I didn't mention that I'd like to mention, and we talked about just for a few moments, is the tax implications have changed. Um, so the tax implications have changed in the new CARES Act, which means PPP loan was always non-taxable. However, the expenses that you used the money with can now be deducted. So that has some very positive ramifications on small businesses. Uh, Glenn, let me uh, turn to you because I saw a few questions in the chat uh, about the State CARES Act money, uh, the grants that were, were put out. And I think I heard you saying, obviously this is a new process, so it, it uh, never moves as fast as we, as we wanted to, but you guys are still processing uh, those grants. And so for people who are, are waiting out there, it uh, doesn't mean you were, you were denied, it's still in process, correct? Correct, so we've sent out a significant amount of denials, um, but also a significant amount of approvals, and we still have some in the waiting. So if you haven't heard from us, uh, you know, still hold tight because there's still a possibility that you could receive um, funding in our, in our pipeline as we continue to conduct further diligence. And um, is it correct if you've been approved, there's still an agreement that you need to sign? So don't just uh, get one email. There is some- Correct, there's a, there's a, there was three emails. So they got an email from DECD saying, hey, heads up, you've been approved. Please look out for a SOFI email with the DocuSign link to the grant agreement. And so that's the second step before you actually get funded. So if you haven't received the link um, or you're still waiting on the link, please reach out to the DECD hotline. Um, but also I put my email in the chat because um, I saw a question come up from uh, Steven. Um, he can email me directly so I can track it down with the team. And then on the uh, program for restaurants, entertainment venues, uh, just to be clear, there's no application process for this. This is a process that's going through reviewing Department of Revenue uh, Service records to identify who would qualify? Correct. And I posted the link to the criteria um, in the chat as well, um, because again, this was no application. We were using uh, wages, gross receipts um, as recorded on DRS to make those decisions that fit into our criteria. Garrett, could I just um, add what the different industry codes are for? Because I want people to know that it's a whole, it's a whole variety. So it's a retail, arts, entertainment, recreation, accommodation and food, breweries, wineries, movie theaters, travel arrangement and reservations, uh, transit and ground passenger transportation, commercial and industrial machinery, equipment, rental and leasing. And I just uh, wanted to add that because um, there seem to be some questions in the chat and it looked like some of the question, the businesses um, might be related. So it would be worth um, calling the 860-297-5999 number. That's at DRS for the program that we're talking about, Garrett. So if somebody feels like they have a, a, a revenue loss that is in the uh, ballpark and they haven't heard from DRS, they can actually call and find out the status. Okay, that's, re that's really good to know because I'm sure uh, a lot of our businesses are, are looking for all these different opportunities and kind of uh, gets, gets tiring waiting in the email to see if you, if you received it. So there is an opportunity where you can get engaged 
uh, in this process. And, and, if we can come and, and, in the chat. and I just want to add this point because I, I, I really take you know, heart to, you know, again, the patience that all of our small businesses have exercised through the beginning and the onset of this pandemic. And again, our programs were really meant to be that shot in the arm and bridge. So please don't sit and wait, hoping that you're going to get, you know, something from the Small Business Connecticut CARES grant program or the Business Recovery grant program. Follow up, make sure you check your boxes there, but that should not prohibit you from being aggressively pursuing PPP and IDLE and all the other SBA programs that Catherine mentioned, because it's not one or the other. You need to be pursuing all angles um, and you shouldn't just be kind of standing by hoping that you're gonna get a state grant. You should be actively pursuing the federal dollars. And Garrett, I wanna also say that I have visited dozens of businesses that were able to access and, and literally dozens of businesses that got the Headco loan, the bridge loan, PPP, IDLE, and state uh, and local economic development aid as well, because the city of Stanford, the city of New Haven was offering that. And why did some businesses get all of that? Well, here's, here's the secret. The secret is, it's no secret, but you got to be on the email list for or following the Women's Business Development Council, the Connecticut Small Business Assistance Center, your chamber. Um, and if you're on those different email lists, you will know in real time when the programs are opening, what the criteria are, and there are people who will help you apply and help you through it so you don't feel just overwhelmed because it can feel incredibly overwhelming for the smallest businesses. And um, so I do want to share that because the businesses that were most successful in getting access to all of the SBA programs and the state and some of the local programs were the ones that were actively watching the WBDC email, um, the, you know, watching what the SBA was putting out and also um, the Small Business Assistance Centers. That's a great point, thank you. Um, Catherine, uh, uh, just following up on Lieutenant Governor's uh, point about that, uh, there are lots of opportunities still to take advantage of here, including the employer retention tax credit, um, which I know you're just starting to get into, but it seems like uh, that may be an opportunity uh, for in 2020, you could either do PPP or the employer retention tax credit. Most people did paycheck protection program, but now uh, the rules have changed and you can apply for both. That's a credit on your federal payroll taxes as well. Yeah, I think, I think what this is teaching us all um, is, is one, things change, right? Um, and two, have your financials um, prepared. Um, because you know this is this is all changing and it's going to have a dramatic effect on on your bottom line. Um, both both Glendalyn and and the governor you know talked about the federal dollars. In the state of Connecticut alone, in 2020, the SBA just just through the Paycheck Protection Program assisted 65,000 companies for a total of. $6.7 billion. So that, that is just a significant amount of money that came into Connecticut. And what we wanna make sure is with this new allotment of PPP that we get out there, we get in front of it, we get our small businesses ready um, to go to their lenders. Uh, question I'm gonna answer ahead of time is, what happens if my lender's not, not ready today? You know, what, what do I do, Catherine? Um, number one, talk to them, pick up the phone, talk to, talk to the lender, find out whether it's going to open tomorrow. If not, go to our website and we have a whole list of lenders in Connecticut. Um, and, and also there's many online lenders where you can get that process going. And Yara, um, I do want to say this, uh, that on either um, Friday of this week, or Monday of next week, um, the state of Connecticut 
DECD, uh, and the Women's Business Development Council are going to be announcing um, a new uh, equity match program. So stay tuned for details because that's going to be targeted to uh, the smallest women-owned businesses. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Again, um, you can uh, follow the Lieutenant Governor's Office, social media, uh, DECD, SBA, WBDC, because there are going to be new programs coming and uh, we want all the businesses that are eligible to be able to apply because as Catherine pointed out, Connecticut really punched above our, our, our weight as a small state in getting access to PPP because we had chambers, DECD, SBA, uh, all working and other business organizations all working together to push out this information and make sure that people were able to access the programs. Uh, that's great to hear. Uh, we'll, we'll look forward to that announcement. Um, Catherine, a uh, technical question for you that I had uh, someone ask me and maybe you know the answer is uh, on, on the PPP2 loan, uh, there is a question about are you delinquent on any payments for SBA loans? Um, do you know, the question I, I received uh, from a preparer was if that meant someone was just behind on payments on paying those loans or if, if they were looking more for something more serious as though you know they had defaulted. Because obviously a lot of businesses that are in this situation are struggling with their expenses. So I don't know if that's something you've, you've run into yet. Right, so, so first of all, um, it, it's always very difficult to sort of answer that one question when I'm always sort of getting you know, just sort of a sliver of information. Right. So I'm going to answer it more broadly for you. Um, and then somebody can al always call my, call call the SBA office. Um, there are certain parameters. You know, this is taxpayers' money that we're handing out. So we have to be, um, you know, good financial stewards of that money. Um, so there are, there, are some, there are some, you know, parameters that you have to go through to get a PPP loan. Um, but there also are, you know, forgiveness, um, increased forgiveness avenues for our traditional SBA programs. So whoever that is, I would, I would suggest they call our office or call one of our resource partners to make sure that they are taking advantage of those as well. Um, so there's, there's just, again, there's just so much information out there. Um, we try to have these segments to get, you know, the basic information. But for, for folks who are, um, and this is always exciting because people are still opening up businesses, right? I and mean, there's still entrepreneurs who are, you know, just charging out there, ready to open up a business. Um, come look at our SBA products because, you know, that's where you might be able to, you know, find the access to capital to start your business. But there are, um, in the new regulation, there are increases in so some of the loan um, forgiveness options, you know, stretching something out um, for a year or two for some of our traditional loans. All right. Thanks. And uh, I'll just remind everyone, if you have questions, you can put them in uh, the chat. Uh, Glenn, uh, I'll ask you this, and I think we've touched on this a little bit, but uh, there are businesses that have not taken advantage of any of these programs. Um, what have you found just in working through DCD? I know a lot of outreach has been done to meet uh, businesses where they are, but what are some of the concerns that you, you've seen and have been able to overcome when people uh, look at these programs? So, I mean, again, I think, you know, we've made significant progress. We were absolutely building the plane as we, you know, uh, tried to fly it to some extent. Um, and, you know, I think having kind of that initial, you know, kind of push in the onset of the pandemic, we really were able to get a few kind of stripes under our belt um, and be kind of better prepared and kind of a better approach on how to kind of work with our small businesses and making sure that, you know, we were getting information out there. We've been really trying to do a better job with data. Um, and, you know, part of that was, you know, we worked with the SPA to look at kind of the first round of the PPP dollars and looking at where was that those funds distributed, right? And, and what was the market penetration, particularly in some of our, 
you know, urban centers. And we were able to kind of get it down to a zip code perspective to then really understand, okay, in this area of Bridgeport, like there wasn't a huge uptick of PPP. How can we bring in the Small Business Development Center, the Black Business Alliance, the Spanish American Merchants Association to really get feet on the street um, and do kind of that personal outreach. So, so those are some of the tactics um, that we've been utilizing to really, again, using data to inform and constantly uh, shift and process improve. We've been doing business impact surveys since the onset of the pandemic. And we've really been trying to use that data as a finger on the pulse to inform, again, our investments and our, our policy approaches. And one of those things was, you know, early on, there was a lot of kind of debt, right? Um, we had the recovery bridge loan product. You know, people didn't really understand PPP and the forgiveness aspect of it. So they were kind of hesitant not to take it on and they were looking at it as debt. Um, and so we heard from small businesses that there was a lot of high anxiety on taking any more debt. They could not literally do it. Um, and so we listened, right? And that's when we rolled out the Connecticut Care Small Business Grant Program, the Business Recovery Grant Program, which are free and clear, no repayment. Um, as long as you, you know, are eligible, you do what you say you're going to do with the money. There's no, you know, uh, provisions are, are attached to that. Um, so again, that that were, you know, many of the tools we used again to just continue to communicate, have a finger on the pulse that then continues to inform our strategy and policy agenda. Right. And uh, Lieutenant Governor, um, there has been a lot of talk about uh, the new administration's stimulus uh, plans. Obviously, those uh, have to go through Congress. There's a lot more that has to occur till we know what what is in those and what gets passed. But um, I assume the state will take a similar approach in trying to find opportunities to uh, get CARES Act funding and whatever the new type of funding is uh, out to support the economic recovery. Oh, absolutely. And I think uh, what is um, what is important and and what we can look forward to is, I think, some significant infrastructure programs um, that will help not just with uh, road and bridge building, but also things like uh, sustainable energy solutions, weatherization. I know that is a big part of the uh, Biden administration's uh, Build Back Better program. Uh, and uh, I do know that um, our Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro, who's gonna be uniquely positioned as chair of the Appropriations Committee, has been pushing for uh, more business recovery funding uh, when the new president uh, gets into office and also um, funding for childcare. Because one of the things that we kept hearing um, as we were listening to small businesses is small businesses were you know, wanting to get their employees back, but having difficulty because childcare um, options had dried up and, um, you know, home daycares and childcare centers had closed down. And this is um, something that's really key and important for our economic infrastructure. And that is that there is affordable quality childcare. Um, so I think you're gonna be seeing uh, more money um, coming to Connecticut for childcare. So to the extent that you have businesses who are in this field as part of the chamber or people, entrepreneurs who are thinking about new business ideas. Um, that is a really prime area. And I just want to highlight something else. And that is that over the past year, the secretary of the state's office has gotten a record number of new business filings, probably because we have so much unemployment and people have taken this opportunity to say, okay, what do I really wanna do? I've always thought about starting a business to do X and, and now they're actually doing it. Uh, Catherine, we had a question about uh, the shuttered venue operator uh, grant. Maybe you could just explain that uh, to folks because that is a new feature uh, of the bill that came out. Right, that's a, that's a new feature. And it, again, I didn't wanna put you know too much on the, everybody's plate right away. So the shuttered venues operator grant or SVOG, um, is a new uh, 
a new program. It's purely a grant program meant for live venues, such as theaters, aquariums, museums. Um, the, the bill authorized $15 billion for the SBA to make grants up to 10 million. Um, and it is not yet open. Um, it will open soon. We're starting to get information. Um, you can, on SBA, I hate to send people to websites because I know they just say, you know, I've had enough, but um, we're putting our latest information on the website. As soon as it, is, as soon as it opens, um, you'll hear about it. The important thing about this program is you can't go for the shuttered venues op operator grant and the second PPP. If you got the first PPP in the spring, you can still go for the grant, but you can't now, in, you know, in, in 2020, in February of 2020, you can't go for both. So you're going to have to make a choice. Another important thing about the shuttered venue operator grant is that the money is going to be given out over time based on need. So it's, it's going to be, you know, somebody who has a 70% revenue loss is gonna get their monies before someone with a 25% revenue loss. So it's really meant to hit the hardest of the hard. Again, it's the Shuttered Venues Operator Grant and it's for venues like live venue operators or promoters, theatrical producers, live performing arts organization operators, museum operators, motion picture theater operators, and talent representatives. Thank you. Um, we'll, we'll wrap up in just a few minutes. I'll give each of our, our panelists a moment to just kind of uh, give us some um, closing thoughts. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to put them into the chat uh, or contact the chamber and we can uh, follow up with you. Uh, as I said, we can connect you with some of our partners that were mentioned here today. Uh, or also with some of our members who uh, specialize in these areas and are, are willing to help out. So uh, Glenn, maybe I'll, I'll start with you and just some closing thoughts on, on the programs and how people can access them. Or, okay, can you hear me? Perfect. Okay, great. Um, thank you. I think, you know, the biggest takeaway and, and call to action for small businesses is, you know, if you've applied for the Connecticut Care Small Business Grant, um, and haven't heard, please reach out to us. Um, again, I will leave that information in the, the chat um, via our hotline or email uh, to check on the status. Um, and again, if you apply or anticipating that you should be receiving a, a check for the business recovery grant via DRS, I would just, again, um, ask you to follow up uh, with the DRS hotline um, that again, will be in the chat um, to check on the status and if you can anticipate a check. But more importantly, I will just reiterate all of our programs were designed to be a bridge to, again, the larger federal stimulus dollars that were coming. And so you've heard from uh, Catherine and the SBA today, PPP is open, IDLE is coming, uh, shuttered venue uh, SBA administered grants are coming. So please keep your ears to the pavement um, contact your local bank, uh, look at SBA's website relative to the online lenders that are on there, or there's um, also resources that can match, make you with a, a lender um, to get on that PPP train. Um, and then also just get connected to one of our partners. We have, again, the Connecticut Small Business Development Center, the WBDC, the Women's Business Development Center, the Black Business Alliance, Spanish American Merchants Association, to name a few. Um, that are all on DECD's website, get connected. They have, you know, their ears are to the pavement. They can help you navigate. They can point you to the exact programs that you are eligible for. Um, and so don't try to do this in silence and don't try to do it by yourself. Make sure you are making yourself um, and utilizing these resources that are available to you and that are, are free and are, are really there to help you navigate through this crisis. Great, thanks, Glenn. Catherine? Um, we're here working with our state partners to make sure to get the information out. So 
a lot of acronyms, but there's money there. There's money there for the second draw. It opened today. 5% revenue loss. Um, talk to your lender, get your application in, keep your ears to the ground for the shuttered venues operator grant. Um, but most importantly, walk the walk, talk the talk, try to visit and shop local, um, help our small businesses every way you can. Spring is coming, the vaccine is coming, a um, lot of positives along the way. So let's help these small businesses out here and um, we'll have a better, better 2021. Thank you for having me. Great, thanks a lot. And Lieutenant Governor, I'll give you the last word. Thank you so much. Um, you know, we made sure around the holiday time to try to encourage shop local, but Catherine is right. Every day should be a small business day. So please uh, try to support your local retail and your local restaurant businesses because we wanna make sure that they're there uh, when we get to the other side of this pandemic. Um, our office number is 860-524-7384, 860-524-7384. Um, we can help you with uh, either DECD or SBA issues if you need it, or if you think we can be of any other help to you. Uh, and please do um, make sure that you take advantage of our DECD hotline at 860-500-2333 uh, and some of the resource partners, including the WBDC in Stanford, where a live business um, assistance will help you. So we really appreciate this opportunity, Garrett. Thank you for your leadership uh, in connecting all of us together. Great. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Governor and Catherine and Glenn. We appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I will just let everyone know on Friday, we're uh, finalizing the time. I think it's going to be one o'clock. We're going to have uh, several accountants and just take your questions and uh, provide as many answers as we can uh, into the really the details of PPP loans, employee retention tax credit, um, all of that. And uh, later this week, we have our, our second legislative forum with all of our state representatives uh, for the greater New Haven region. Uh, you can go on our website uh, to learn more about that as well as our jobs fair coming up in February. Thanks everyone, have a great day.